welcome and we have a hello from Egypt. Uh, hello there. What time is it in Egypt right now? Quite a bit later, maybe early evening, if my geography is slightly decent. Welcome to this edition of Tuesdays at 2. I am your host, Antoinette LaGrosa. I am with Schiller Learning. And do we have any new homeschoolers in the session today? So plug into that chat uh, where you are from, as well as if you are new to homeschooling, if you've been at this for a while, let us know that too. We are here to support you in helping your child maximize their potential. And we do that with multi-sensory resources, be it uh, scripted math and language arts curriculum, or other resources like this Tuesdays at two, or our many activity packs, wonderful blog resources, videos on the Schiller Learning YouTube channel. We have some lovely warm places, Orlando, Texas, uh, South Carolina. Oh, Missouri. I am actually heading out to Missouri. Uh, Teresa, are you by chance going to the great homeschool convention this week. I will be there uh, landing in Missouri on Thursday morning. The development of language begins at home well before preschool age. And how we speak with and read to our child has great impact. As we begin to homeschool, one of the early materials that we can use with our kids is the movable alphabet. So today we're going to take a look at you know, using the movable alphabet for uh, phonics, reading, spelling, and uh, some additional activities that you can do with it. The movable alphabet is something that most kids really enjoy. Uh, they like being able to, you know, feel those letters in addition to just seeing them. So this is one of those things that kids are going to be drawn to and want to pull out over and over again. We also have Tyler from Tennessee. Tyler, uh, Amanda and I actually both will be in, it's not Nashville this year. Amanda, help me Pigeon out. Pigeon Forge. <laughs> Thank you, Pigeon Forge. Uh, as Larry Schiller tells us, um, communicating means being able to speak, listen, read, and write well. In Schiller Learning Language, our students learn more than just the technical aspects of speaking, listening, reading, and writing. They're also taught to think about how they and others may affect change in themselves and the world using language arts. Self-awareness is key to achieving our goals in academics as well as life in general. Okay, so readiness for beginning reading skills. Although we use, oh, these slides are a little bit of delay there in, in changing over. So although we use limited language when presenting a lesson, which enables the child to be able to dis discover concepts through exploration and experience, you know, there are opportunities for organic language practice, having conversations, imaginative play, role playing. Uh, and that role playing, by the way, is something that you see suggested throughout Schiller Learning curriculum. And what that is, is that you switch places with the child so they can take turns playing the role of teacher and asking you questions about something that they have learned. So in addition to that imaginative play and that type of role playing, uh, do keep in mind you know, that changing roles with your child. Uh, reading and telling stories and by extension, 
introducing new vocabulary and ideas. The learning of sounds in all of these language building activities indirectly prepares children for reading and writing. It's important to use real words, by the way, and avoid baby talk in conversation with your child. Um, by using real words, words, <laughs> uh, I can use real words. By using real words, you help to broaden your child's vocabulary. And that is one of the things building your child's vocabulary helps them to become that emergent reader. Because if your child is trying to decode words that they've never been introduced to in conversation or in being read to, they're going to have that much more challenge in decoding them than they would if they were familiar with them. Uh, that's one of the many layers of benefits to reading to your child. We do have a blog post on Family Read Aloud and how if you start reading a book a day to your child, you know, when they're very young, all of the many thousands of words that they will have been introduced to by the time that they're getting to the stage where they're going to begin to read. So keep that in mind. Now, um, some communication tips that will help your child be on a roll before you know it. One of them is about making eye contact. And you want to speak with a student only after making that intimate eye contact. This type of eye contact occurs only when both sets of eyes are at that same level. It does not work if you are standing either above or below the child. So that said, achieving same level eye contact by bending at the waist uh, does not imply the required uh, respect for the student to be able to readily engage. And you want to instead bend at the knees, which is also going to be better ergonomically for you. Uh, so that is going to be a win-win. Alrighty, tone of voice. We tell our kids about this, right? Uh, and it's something to keep in mind for ourselves. So when speaking, be aware of your tone of voice and you achieve best results when you use a calm, respectful voice, even when your expectations are non-negotiable and when you are making sure that those are carried out. The volume of your voice also makes a difference in how the student responds. Students are used to adults speaking to them in loud voices. And when you use a low volume voice, you command attention because a child may find it extraordinary. And after the novelty wears off, the warm and supportive communication, even when firm, continues to promote student attention and responsiveness. People tend to listen and respond better to a low volume voice. And this is something that I have always been amazed at with my own children. And uh, even in classes um, that I have taught. And that is how, you know, when kids aren't exactly paying attention and they are beginning to um, wander either, you know, mentally or physically from the task at hand and what's being expected of them, you know, dropping that voice, even to a whisper, instantly gets their attention. And now they're trying to figure out what you were trying to say. That also works if they start chatter amongst themselves. The drop that to a very low voice volume or even a whisper can um, get a nice response 
with catching everyone's attention. Uh, another tip is to vary the location of where you and the child are working. So research shows that deeper understanding takes place when a child, um, their location of learning varies in both um, time of day, duration, place, environment, and lighting. Uh, and you've probably heard me mention this before, but Montessori really stresses the importance of a child's connection with nature. And so taking your work outside is a wonderful option for that. So you can take your movable alphabet and the activities that you're going to do into other locations. You can also pair the movable alphabet material with the tracing tray. You may be familiar with the Montessori uh, sand trays that are used for tracing. When Schiller Learning came out with language arts back in 2016, Larry did something ingenious, and I cannot tell you how popular this substitution is. And that is swapping out the uh, sand for quinoa. Now, in the case of the Schiller Learning tracing tray, we're using the red quinoa because that's going to provide a really nice color contrast between that light natural wood and the, the tracing material. If you were going to be using a metal cookie sheet for this, uh, I'd recommend going with just the, the tan, standard tan quinoa that you see in most grocery stores, because again, that will give you that nice contrast. And so, you know, the child, can be introduced to the letter with the movable alphabet, and then they can practice tracing that. Once they're um, practicing reading and spelling words with the alphabet, they can again practice tracing those words into that uh, tracing tray. So that's another material that you can use alongside of the movable alphabet to the star of the show and that is the beautiful wooden movable alphabet. The Montessori movable alphabet set is made of wood and as you can see it is color coded for vowels and consonants and if you do have any questions and you have to head out early, go ahead and put those into the chat. You can um, direct message those to us as well. Um, and if you'd like to include your email address, we can actually, you know, just uh, contact you outside of the session after. So we are glad to ha have you on. The movable alphabet as you um, See there, it is color-coded for vowels and consonants. It has, of course, all 26 letters of the alphabet, vowels in blue, consonants in red. You're getting 10 of each of the vowels, five of each of the consonants. And kids are going to love all stages of reading readiness, uh, practice, spelling, and more with the movable alphabet. That color coding really helps those vowels pop out of the words. There, you can see the color coding. The divided wooden box makes it really easy for your student to keep the materials organized and be able to return those materials to their proper location in the box. Underneath each stack of letters, you'll actually find the letter painted into that compartment. So in the event that 
your child were to dump all of the letters, even without knowing alphabetical order or being able to know what the letters are, they can do a matching game and match all of the letters to that painted in its compartment. It really helps the student to be independent in caring for their materials right from the get-go. Okay, so the movable alphabet is going to be used with the work mat. Uh, the Schiller Learning Work Mat is about uh, 30 by 22 inches, and it's simply something to define the workspace. Now, when you are working with the letters, you can optionally um, just put a piece of masking tape on there to provide a line. It's not necessary, though, um, because the child can uh, take that opportunity to also, you know, do some exactness with lining those letters up so they're not, um, you know, all over the place. So simply bring the movable alphabet to the mat and invite your child to join you. First, you're going to introduce the set as a whole, okay, that it is the movable alphabet. Don't worry about trying to introduce all of the sounds or letters at once. New information is best digested in small bits. Okay, the phonemic awareness, that's your phonics, is fundamental to understanding that letters represent sounds. Because this is so important, we teach the sounds the letters make first rather than the names. And that is not the same thing as the child learning his alphabet. Children often learn their ABCs by rote memory, singing the alphabet song. We all did it, a lot of us did it. Um, but doing so without truly understanding the actual alphabetic principle. And in Montessori, this is not the case. In Schiller Learning, letters are introduced in an order that is designed for the child to be able to quickly read and spell words. The first four letters that we are introducing, uh, and we do, uh, you'll, you'll find this in Language Arts uh, Kit A. So the first four letters that we are introducing are C, M, A, T. And with learning just a simple four letters, your child is already able to both read and spell words such as cat, mat, bat, and even more than just those. But with four letters, they are already getting that confidence boost that they are rocking this reading thing and doing really well. So it, it's nice to be able to see that. Okay, so the phonemes are the smallest units of sound in language. In the word cat, you're hearing three of those, and that's the k, a, t. And English, of course, is an alphabetic language in which letters stand for sounds. Now, in order to read and write effectively, children need to be able to detect the sounds. And the Montessori method is very strong in phonics um, for early reading sequence. And the movable alphabet helps to make those sounds and the connection they have to the letters very concrete and real for the child. Uh, rhyming, which we will take a look at shortly, helps um, with becoming aware of the sounds contained in words also. And by teaching the letter sound prior to the letter name, you are helping to avoid a common struggle in early reading. And sometimes you will see where 
the student, instead of when they are um, reading those early words and beginning to make that decoding, they're throwing in letter names um, instead of the sound for some of the letters. And that is generally because that was the first um, connection that the brain made to that abstract syllable. And so that is what's being reflexively recalled. And by simply introducing that sound first, you can prevent that struggle from happening in the first place. Okay, now you want to avoid adding vowel sounds to consonants. And this is another common mistake that happens. Um, so in Language Arts Kit A, by the way, you will notice um, in italics, the letters U, H after a consonant. For example, uh, it'll say the letter B and it'll have just B uh, makes a B, B, U, H sound. You want to emphasize and prolong the consonant sound and exaggerate the movement and placement of the lips, mouth, and throat as you're making that letter sound. That accompanying UH that is after that in the text is simply there to differentiate between saying the letter name B and making the sound of the vowel, but it really is imperceptible. You're just making that vowel sound. And, you know, it's something that we as an adult will often do kind of without really thinking about the implications of that, uh, instead of just doing that b, 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 to go ba and adding an extra vowel sound, which if we're training our child to do that means when they're blending that B with an actual vowel sound in a word that they're going to be um, probably adding extra sounds in there that will trip them up. So let's uh, you know use the UH to differentiate between saying the letter name and making the sound and then just make the sound. But again, really do exaggerate that uh, facial expression, the movement of your um, mouth. If your child is having difficulty um, pronouncing some words or for some sounds, there are some strategies that can help them. Um, for example, while you're making the sound, have the child place his or her hand on your throat or mouth to feel the vibration of the sound, and then go ahead and place their hand on their own you know, mouth or throat while they're attempting to imitate that same sound so that they can feel where the vibration was coming from as you're making that sound, as well as trying to imitate that same, not just sound, but that, you know, that physical awareness of what is happening and where that sound is coming from. You can also have the child stand uh, and watch you make the sound side by side in a mirror and then watch themselves making that sound. It's true, a picture is worth a thousand words and this works for phonics too. So, um, you know, being able to see you making it, how your mouth is moving, and then again, imitating that. And that goes to, you know, the, the Montessori recommendation of don't tell them how to do it, show them. You can also use different volume and pitch when practicing sounds. And that can help the student in a number of ways as well. And for the um, accompanying the sounds that have a puff of air, such as or, you could actually, you know, have them put the, their hand in front of your or their own mouth and feel that um, puff of air that is happening and then feeling that for themselves. We are getting to 
some actual reading. So we've, we've got lots of tips and I do think that you will find all of those very useful. But so as we are introducing the letters, as I said, we wanna do that sound first. And then we're gonna do that with the individual letter. So only that letter is going to go onto the work mat, excuse me. And then you wanna give the child some time to look at the letter, feel the letter, and, and think about and absorb that information of what that letter looks like, what it feels like as they are internalizing the sound of that letter and become aware of the fact that the symbol is what is representing the sound that both you and they are making. Learning can indeed be fun. You want to differentiate between the pronunciation and reading errors. For example, some children will mispronounce the letter R with a W sound. And if that is happening when they are decoding the uh, letter R in a word such as, as red and they're saying red, well, that's a pronunciation error. It is not a reading error. And you want to be sure to differentiate between that because in most cases, uh, pronunciation errors such as this are much like writing numbers backwards and may be treated the same way simply by providing the correct sound and moving on. Now, that said, if a student does not grow out of those common speech errors by about um, six or seven, then you might consider consulting a speech pathologist for, um, for specific recommendations. Now, if the child skips the R sound altogether and instead says ed instead of red, that is an, a reading error. And you wanna pause and have um, them reread the word and point to each letter as they make the individual sounds and blend them together even if the R is mispronounced. Or if it's instead of skipping it, if they use a sound that you know is not the sound that um, they're making when it comes to that particular letter. Read often to your child. This is going to help them learn the mechanics of reading. And in doing so, it's, it's really helpful if you follow along the words with your finger, because that's going to help train their eye movement, that top to bottom and left to right. The proper eye tracking is really important because um, that in some reading issues is the root of the problem. So the, the Montessori use of nomenclature cards and the way we lay materials out, if we keep that in mind to always do that left, right, top to bottom, that will help train the proper eye tracking for reading. The practice and build on reading words using the letters that have been learned. As I mentioned, we start with those letters, C-M-A-T. And these are some of the words that the student can practice immediately with learning just those four. Uh, as you add new letters, the child can be given an, a, a period of independent exploration of those setting those out on the mat. It is recommended that consonants go on one side and then vowels will go on the other. 
Another thing that you can do with the movable alphabet is match words with real life objects. So one of the things that's right in Language Arts Kit A that you can do this with is um, the Montessori insets. These are beautiful metal insets. It's a fabulous handwriting manipulative. We do have another session that is entirely devoted to the uh, metal insets. So if you missed that one, do check that out. But you can use objects you have around the house, things that your child loves. What is their interest? Grab those and use the movable alphabet to spell the words for them, creating labels. That's really going to you know, help to get your child um, further interested in the use of the material. It's also a fun challenge for them and a way to spur on to that next level. Okay, so rhyming words. This is another thing that I absolutely, this is one of my favorite things to do with the movable alphabet. And rhyming is another one of those important early reading activities. Rhyming teaches children how language works. And that is one of the reasons that the reading uh, material that is included in Language Arts Kit A is that Mother Goose rhymes. It helps them to notice and work with the sounds within words. So when children are familiar with a nursery rhyme or a rhyming book, they learn to anticipate the, uh, the coming words because they are rhyming. So this prepares them to make predictions about what they read, which is another important reading skill. Rhyming lends itself to better phonemic awareness and the ability to break words into those smaller parts that they need to be able to you know, recognize those smaller parts in the words and then put them together. That is crucial um, in being able to both read and spell. And that is, by the way, one of the best predictors of how well a pre-K or kindergarten child will read uh, is if he or she knows their nursery rhymes. Again, um, Mother Goose rhymes, it, it's a great selection. There are tons of enjoyable rhyming books for children, but rhyming definitely adds joy and whimsy to the task of learning to read. One other note about the Mother Goose Rhymes that is included with the Schiller Learning Language Arts Kit A, sometimes um, people are surprised to find that it is completely not illustrated. You will not find a single picture in that book. And that's because, um, it is important to include non-illustrated reading selections with um, what you're reading to your child so that they are entirely responsible to listening to and all of those details and creating that you know, mind picture for them. And that's gonna help them later on also when they are trying to take the mind picture that they have and put it in two words. Um, but it's also going to help them focus more on the details of the story um, so that those things are not being filled in with that illustration. And illustrations will also often fill in details that are not included in the story. So we want them, it's, it's good for reading comprehension as well. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah, so there, there is a, a 
very important reason um, behind that. And we all have beautiful picture books for our kids, generally. Um, we've got quite a supply of beautiful picture books. We love reading them to our children. There absolutely is an important role for them as well. But especially for the really early books, it's rare to find things for very young children that are not illustrated. Okay, uh, and on the screen here, this is actually um, an activity laid out that I had done with my uh, youngest child and putting that repeated word ending and then going through step-by-step step to see uh, which of the letters in the whole movable alphabet would create a, a rhyming word for that. And that systematic going through and um, you know, trying that out, seeing which of those consonants or even vowels um, would create an actual word is going to help the child later on when they're doing poetry or, or writing something themselves for you know, having a very efficient um, way of finding uh, rhyming words for what they're working on. Rhyming teaches children how language works. Okay, using the movable alphabet to practice spelling. I love the movable alphabet for spelling practice. This is fabulous because even without having to be able to write letters, your child is able to practice spelling words over and over again. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that color coding for those vowels and consonants will help those vowel patterns and those word endings, the word groupings, uh, jump out of those words for them. As they begin to learn letters, you can go ahead and, as I mentioned earlier, put the consonants on one side and the vowels on the other. And then you can demonstrate, as we've said before, instead of telling them what to do, go ahead and demonstrate it. Take some of those consonants in that case of, you know, C-M-A-T, you could take maybe the A and put it at the beginning of the word and spell act and sound it out and you know, place the letters into different places, making the sounds until it fits. And now you've made a word. And again, this is one of those places where having been exposed to a rich vocabulary from the time of birth is going to pay dividends. They're going to have an easier time at creating new words. Of course, in the lessons themselves, as you're introducing them, you would be doing that, but in that recall of the different words they can create with the letters, it is going to help. So they can just practice and see, okay, what are all of the uh, words that we can make with the letters that we have learned so far? So in the beginning, you would just have those four letters out. And then as they increase that exposure, you'll increase the number of words that they are spelling. So there's a few ways that you can do that. Uh, you can focus on beginning sounds. So uh, let's, in this case, uh, work with making words that are starting with the letter R and then experimenting with the middle and ending sounds. You can focus on the ending sound and experiment with those beginnings or uh, focus on the middle sound. And it's good to vary where your 
focus is because sometimes if you're doing all of, okay, what begins with the sound, the, the child's um, focus gets skewed and we want to realize um, the importance of indeed all of those letters throughout that word so that they're not just going uh, for that beginning sound and then trying to recognize the rest of it as a whole. Now, phonics, super important, but as you know, not every word in the English language uh, follows the patterns of phonics. And so sight words are going to be important also. As you are building that phonetic awareness and uh, skill in the child, you can add sight words as you are going. So things um, like the tends to be one of those first sight words that we're teaching children. Okay, so they're, they're using it for reading, they're using it for spelling, their um, rhyming, which is going to help them with both the reading and the spelling. Another thing that you can do with the movable alphabet is use it to give that visual cue and additional visual, visual support when you are later working with prefixes, roots, suffixes. That color coding for the vowels and consonants, it also helps to make those different word parts more visible to the child. Uh, same thing with syllables. Some children have a terrible time uh, clapping out. That's a, a traditional way of doing syllables, clapping for each um, vowel sound in the word. The movable alphabet is going to help make those syllables very visible to the student. So even you know beyond those beginning skills, there's going to be a lot that your child is able to do with these, including um, creating inspirational quotes. So if you're using the Schiller Learning um, parent and student planners, those are free at our website. You'll see some inspirational quotes in there. You can add others of your own that inspire you to keep going. And that's something else that is fun to do with the movable alphabet because it helps to get the child to focus on that quote. Okay, and then as with all of the materials, I do recommend once you've done that uh, guided exploration instruction with the material, you give the student a period of free exploration. That means they get to do whatever they want with it. These are some things that my son had made with his movable alphabet. So like many of the math materials, they can also be used to create little mosaics and fun artistic creations. Okay, um, now Maria Montessori on language skills, not only does it fuse men into groups and nations, but it is the central point of difference between the human species and all others. Language lies at the root of that transformation of the environment that we call civilization and helping your child to develop effective communication tools is going to help them you know, make the um, a difference in their own lives as well as the lives of those around them. And it, it's going to help them to really enjoy life and build good relationships when they are effective communicators. And I think you'll find that the movable alphabet is going to help you start that journey with your child. Oh, there is, by the way, a promo code for the movable alphabet. You can use the promo code movable, easy to remember there, and that is going to give you an additional 10% off of the sale price on that. We do sell everything individually, but by the way, it is included in the Language Arts Kit A, but if you would like to use that 
you know, along with another program, it really makes a perfect addition to any language arts approach that you are using with your child, a very effective support 